Hey, it's Ian. I'm thrilled to have you here for this critical part in our new doubles strategy workshop focused on how to implement the chaos theory of doubles so you can take charge during your matches, get more wins, and have more fun too. The first video showed you how to move proactively so that you can put the squeeze on your opponents by shutting down the easiest spots on the court for them to hit. The second video coached you through calmly and effectively transitioning forward to join your partner at the net and in offensive position. If you haven't already watched both of those lessons, be sure to check them out ASAP because they're critical pieces to the puzzle. You'll see a link to all the videos in this series in the description down below. When you start pressuring your opponents the way that we've described in those first two videos, the most natural way for them to respond is with a lob, which is why today's video is so important for your success. Let's get right down to business and listen in as I explain the right attitude and outlook to have about lobs and what the two main reasons are why amateur tennis athletes struggle with them. So we, we spent a whole bunch of time working on how to get into the net. And now once both players are at the net, the most common response is, is a lob. And it makes sense. We have both players now in an offensive attacking position. And so the most offensive position deserves the most defensive shot, right? Um, don't complain about that. You've earned a high, slow, weak defensive shot. And you should actually welcome lobs. If you're not, then one of two things is happening. Either your footwork is not as good as it, as it should be, and you're not moving very athletically or very quickly, or your anticipation is not very good, and you're not reading that the lob is coming until after it's already been hit. And at that point in time, it's you know good luck. Even with great footwork, it's difficult to make up for that. If you combine those two things, which is the state of most tennis players' game, just you know, being honest, not very good anticipation, not very good footwork. And the result is they hate getting lobbed and it just makes sense. So how close should you stand when you're at the net? The answer is, depends on how good of a job you do in those two areas, your footwork and your anticipation. If you're one of those countless tennis players who hates getting lobbed, then the next few minutes are critical to your improvement. We'll start by covering the anticipation part of the equation as I explain what the four P's are and how they'll let you know a lob is coming before it actually gets hit. Number one is position, where they are on the court. Are they on the baseline or are they falling into the back you know, corner? Are they way off the court? The worse their position is, the more likely they're gonna hit a really defensive shot, AKA a lob. Uh, number two is preparation. What are they doing with their racket? If they take the racket back with a closed racket face and you know, a strong turn with their body and their shoulders, chances are it's gonna be a drive. Not 100% of the time, but talking about likelihood here, being able to anticipate. Number three is patterns. <laughs> This was probably the one I found most amusing when I was teaching full time at a club with like 14 ladies teams and everybody, everybody complained about the same thing every week. Oh, they lob all the time and then they would still continue to close in and get lobbed over. You have to know the tendencies of your opponents. So patterns are super, super important. And then lastly, I fudged on this one a bit, uh, poise, AKA balance what kind of control that they're in with their body. Um, are they leaning to get to the shot or are they, in, are they in good balance? Now, any one of these things being out of whack could mean a lob. Two of them, and it's probably likely, three or four being present, they're out of position, their preparation is with an open racket face, uh, their pattern is they like to lob a lot. You, you start combining three or four and if you, don't, if you didn't see the lob coming, it's your fault. It's not, it's not that, oh, it's, it's the lob or they lob everything. Not, it's, your, it's on your shoulders now. It's your responsibility to see that coming and position yourself accordingly. So if you see three or four of those factors at play and your position is here, then just expect to have a bad day uh, because you're leaving them tons and tons of space. So even if your footwork is excellent, you're really gonna have a difficult time defeating that team. 
It's important to realize that knowing the four Ps isn't good enough. You'll have to purposefully train your lob spidey sense by studying opponents and starting to notice the patterns that are happening all around you. Start watching for those four elements the next time you're out on the courts and start building your lob awareness so that you can be more successful. Now let's move on to the topic of footwork because most tennis players use terrible movement patterns when a lob goes up into the air. Here's what that looks like and why it's a problem. The worst possible way to move back for a lob is to move back with your heels leading, with your heels first. I've seen broken wrists, uh, I've seen cracked open heads. Literally, this is not a joke, somebody died doing this earlier this year. A friend of somebody in our audience went back for, uh, for an overhead, tripped, went back, hit his head, and I don't know, you know, from complications or, you know, whatever, uh, passed away at the hospital. So not only is it slow and unathletic, but it truly, it truly is a dangerous way to move as well. So it's the worst way to move back. Uh, you have three other options besides that. Just use one of these three, uh, please. Uh, option number one, well, regardless of which one you use, your first movement is going to be the same. You will uh, drop back with your dominant side foot and bring back your dominant side elbow. That's the first movement that should happen when you see or anticipate that a lob is going up into the air. Uh, from that position, you can do one of three things. Um, you can either shuffle back using a, a lateral shuffle, or you can use a crossover step. So first move and crossover step. It takes a little bit more athleticism, but it's a little bit faster as well. Or you can combine the two, and from this position, cross over a couple times and then shuffle, cross over and shuffle. Most professional players use a, a combination on a difficult lob. They'll cross over a few times, then finish off with a shuffle or use a scissor kick, which we'll actually work on in just a minute. But balance is key, athleticism is key, and using one of these patterns is, is the best way for that to happen. Now that you know what three movement patterns work well for covering lobs, let's watch our students practice them so that you can see what common mistakes players tend to make. Yep, split, pivot, and shuffle. Now a couple repetitions at a faster pace. Uh, without the crossover, still just the shuffle, but, but let's see a little bit of urgency uh, with the shuffles. Pivot and quick, a quick shuffle, quick shuffle. I'm just putting Good, a couple, couple more, quick shuffle. Okay, now we're gonna try the, the crossover. Uh, you're gonna make a split step, pivot, and then your left, you're all right-handed, uh, your left foot is gonna cross in front of your right, and you'll continue that pattern for three or four steps. Your shoulders are gonna stay perpendicular to the net, and your hips are gonna rotate back. That's it, Kirby. Yep, that's it, Pat. Yep, that's it, Mary. Catherine, I want to see you try to point your, your toes more towards the back uh, corner. You, you're doing a good job crossing over, but your, uh, your left foot toes are pointing kind of that way, which makes it a little bit more awkward. Yep, 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 yep. And then the key is finding the right angle so that it's not weird to keep your shoulders okay. perpendicular. That was a little farther than you want to go. All right, now last one, we're going to combine them. Split step, pivot, cross, cross, shuffle, shuffle. The two crosses and two shuffles. So the crossover steps are, are going to help you cover more ground immediately. The shuffle steps help gather your balance and get prepared to, to make your swing. Try a couple more, full speed. There's also a fourth, more advanced footwork pattern that you're probably familiar with, even though it's rarely taught. It's called the scissor kick, and it allows for dynamic rotation during an overhead swing, even when you may be pushed back by an especially good defensive shot. You can practice this right now in your living room or office to get a feel for it. As you move back, uh, laterally, either with a shuffle or, or with a crossover, 
All it is is loading up on your back leg, pushing, and then pivoting and catching yourself on your front foot. So as a righty, you guys will load on your, on your right foot, on your right leg, push up, and then land on your left leg. So shuffle, shuffle, load, swing, and then catch your, your balance, catch your weight on your other leg. So you're allowing your body to turn, which makes it easier to make your swing as, you're, as you are transitioning back. And so this is a, a pattern that you'll use on a really tough lob that's really pushing you back far. Um, obviously takes a little bit more uh, coordination, but once you get the hang of it, it gives you way more ability to hit a ball out of the air instead of it you know, turning into one of these uh, where it's kind of a hook shot or you're letting it bounce uh, behind you. Here's a few quick clips of our students giving that scissor kick a try for the very first time. They did a great job. So practice kind of just planting yep. and hitting. That's it, Judy. Good, go ahead. At your, uh, so you're, you guys are gonna load, load on your right leg? Hit. Yep, exactly. Hop Good. and land on your left foot. Load, hit. Yep. Hop off your right and land on your left. Yep, there you yep, go. Yep. That's it. Good. That's it, Tony. That's it, Mark. Yeah, good, Ooh. good, good. That's it, Tony. Next, it was time to let the rubber meet the road and allow our students to try anticipating lobs during a live rally. This is a drill that I highly recommend you spend time with at home to purposefully develop your lob awareness and footwork patterns. You'll see Kirby steadily move forwards while hitting down the middle to Ira, who's trying to let her get in close enough to catch her off guard with a lob. Kirby actually didn't read his first one at all, even though the signs were there. Here's what happened so that you can learn from it. Kirby's gonna close in steadily, just like we did earlier today, under control. And she's gonna watch Ira closely to try to read when he's going to lob. Ooh. Did anybody see Ira's lob coming? Anybody? Yeah, I did. What, what was the indication? Oh, good, good, good. So bending over, stretching, so that's um, poise, that's position, and that's also preparation. So the racket face uh, was open as he went down towards the ball. I hope today's video was super helpful, but please know that it's just the tip of the iceberg. You can get instant access to the other two coaching videos in this powerful series for free right now by simply clicking the link in the description down below and letting me know where to send them. You'll learn everything you need to know to change your doubles play from weak, passive, and tentative to confident, proactive, and aggressive so you can win more matches, have more fun, and be the player at your local courts who everybody wants to be partners with. All you have to do is click the link right down below, enter your email address, and a link to all three videos will be in your inbox just seconds from now. I can't wait to continue helping you improve your doubles game. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please click like and be sure to subscribe because we have new coaching coming out every single week. Thanks so much for watching, take care, and good luck with your tennis.